How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This video is on covalent bonding and this is by far the most important type of bonding that you'll cover in topic 4. Let's get straight to it. Okay, topic 4, volume 3, covalent bonding. We need to know what is a covalent bond and we discuss bond length and bond strength in molecules. 4.2 covalent bonding, there's a few different IB understandings focusing around single, double and triple bonds. We talk about length and strength, we talk about polarity and then we'll talk about a bond being non-polar covalent or polar covalent. So the definition of covalent bonding is the electrostatic force of attraction of one or more pairs of shared electrons to the two nuclei they are shared between. A chemical bond forms when the outer shells come close enough for those orbitals to overlap. Covalent molecules share electrons to form a full outer shell, and all period 2 and 3 metal non-metals want to fill 8 electrons in their valent shell. That's called the octet rule. The simplest covalent molecule is the hydrogen molecule, where we have two hydrogens, they share one electron each, to form a single covalent bond. A single covalent bond contains two electrons, which is one pair. There's one pair of electrons shared between the two atoms to form a single covalent bond. A double covalent bond is formed when two atoms share two pairs of electrons, or four electrons. So for example, oxygen gas is formed between two oxygen atoms that share two pairs of electrons to form a double covalent bond. Now oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. So it has two unpaired, two electrons that are paired, and we describe these as being non-bonding electrons. Paired electrons are unlikely to form a covalent bond. So that leaves oxygen with two electrons that are unpaired, which we would describe as being its bonding electrons. So another oxygen atom comes along, it looks like the exact same, it's got two electrons that it can share, so it can form two bonds, and the two oxygens, well they're kind of happy, they can share those two electrons together to form a double covalent bond. So they're sharing four electrons, two pairs. That sharing of two pairs of electrons is a double covalent bond. A double covalent bond will be shorter and stronger than a single covalent bond. A triple covalent bond can be formed when two atoms share three pairs of electrons or six electrons in a bond. So for an example of this is nitrogen gas. Nitrogen has five electrons in the outer shell. So that means that nitrogen will have one pair of non-bonding electrons. So nitrogen has three electrons that it would like to share and three electrons that it would like to gain to make a full outer shell. So it has three unpaired electrons. Those three unpaired electrons are what we would describe as the bonding electrons. So when we have two nitrogens, we have these three electrons each that they both want to share. So they could form a triple covalent bond where they share three electrons each and there would be six electrons shared in the bond. Six electrons, that's three pairs of electrons, which gives us the triple covalent bond. A triple covalent bond is shorter and stronger than both a double and a single covalent bond. Okay, moving on from that discussion, bond length and bond strength. Bond length is a measure of the distance between the two bonded nuclei. Bond strength is described as the bond enthalpy, and that's a measure of how much energy is required to break the bond. How much energy is measured in a unit kilojoules per mole, 
and that's how many kilojoules of energy we need to break one mole of those bonds. That information can be found in the data book. S basically, as the atomic radius increases as we go down a group, we expect the atoms to form molecules with longer bonds, and that's exactly what happens. However, if we have multiple bonds, double or triple bonds, there's a greater force of attraction between the nuclei and the shared electrons. So that electrostatic attraction pulls them closer, which results in bonds that are both shorter and stronger than single bonds. The key point is bond length decreases and bond strength increases as the number of shared electrons begins to increase. You can find information for bond lengths and bond strengths from the data book and we'll go over how to do that. But here are three examples where we're looking at the carbon to carbon bond. So in the first example we have a carbon to carbon single bond. Its bond length is 154 picometers. Just think of that as 154. And the bond enthalpy is 346. In the second example, we have a carbon to carbon double bond. And you can see that the, the bond length decreases and the bond strength increases. For the carbon to carbon triple bond, you can see that it is both the shortest and the strongest bond between those three examples. We also need to discuss about polarity. Now a non-polar covalent bond is where we have two atoms that have the same electronegativity and that's described as a non-polar covalent bond. A polar covalent bond is where we have two different atoms with two different electronegativities and there's unequal sharing of the electrons in the bond. The atom with the highest electronegativity will pull the electrons closer to its nucleus so it creates a partially negative charge and a partial positive charge. For example, oxygen, O2, oxygen is bonding between two oxygen molecules having a double bond. There's no difference in electronegativity, so that's described as a non-polar covalent bond. In HCl, hydrogen chloride, well, we have a big difference in electronegativity between the chlorine and the hydrogen. That creates a partial negative charge on the chlorine as it draws the electrons in the bond closer to its nucleus and a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. So that would be described as a polar covalent bond. Nitrogen, the bonding between nitrogen and hydrogen, Nitrogen has a higher electronegativity than the hydrogen, so the nitrogen draws those, those electrons in that bond closer to its nucleus, giving it a partial negative charge. The partial positive charge will be on all three of the hydrogens. So that is described as a polar covalent bond as well. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S, again the sulfur has a higher electronegativity than the hydrogen, it's not as much, but it's definitely a difference in electronegativity. That means it will draw those electrons in the bond closer to the sulfur atom, giving it a partial negative charge, partial positive charge. So another example of a polar covalent bond. And then finally, methane CH4, obviously carbon and hydrogen. Again, there's a small difference in electronegativity, so it will have polar covalent bonds. The final thing we, need, we are going to discuss is an example kind of question where we need to compare the two bonds between the carbon and oxygen atoms in methanoic acid. The command term compare means give an account of the similarities and differences between two or more items referring to both of them throughout. So remember that the covalent bond length describes the length of the bond and the bond enthalpies describe the strength of the bond. Now the similarities, well what are the similarities between those carbon to oxygen bonds? Well first of all, they're both carbon to oxygen bonds, they're both polar covalent bonds, and they're both covalent bonds. So there's three good similarities. What are some of the differences? Well, it comes into the sharing of electrons. The double covalent bond shares two pairs of electrons, and that means it's going to be both shorter 
and stronger than the carbon to oxygen single bond. So the carbon to oxygen single bond only shares one pair of electrons, which means it will be longer and not as strong as the carbon to carbon double bond. I've put some carbon to carbon data in here. I'm not sure what I was really doing there, but if you look it up in the data book, you'll be able to find the carbon to oxygen single bond and the carbon to oxygen double bond information from the data book. But the main thing is, is the carbon to oxygen double bond will be both shorter and stronger because it shares a greater amount of electron pairs compared to the carbon oxygen single bond, which shares only one pair of electrons between the bond. Okay, so volume three, some top tips. Remember the definition about polar and non-covalent polar bonds, and remember sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms for covalent. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see 